I think I've known what I wanted to be pretty much my entire life. My mom likes to tell people that when I was four, um, I said I wanted to be a mom, and I don't think my answer changed from there on. I love being with children. I love all of them, most of them. Uh, I work in a preschool because I just get my joy and fulfillment from them and believe that that's my purpose in life. So it wasn't a shock to anyone that knew me that within a few months of Brandon and I getting married that I was pregnant. Um, in my vanity, I thought I would have the best pregnancy with the pregnancy glow and the petiteness and all belly, and I thought I would just love all aspects of being pregnant. So when I started feeling um, really short of breath and as though my heart was racing towards the end of my second trimester, it concerned me. Um, when I brought it up with my doctor, she had told me that that was just normal symptoms and that I was just experiencing first pregnancy anxiety. Um, but in my gut, I didn't, I didn't believe that. Um, I just knew that something was not right. It was around 35 weeks that um, I went in for a routine checkup and my blood pressure was considered dangerously high and they had me go to the hospital for observation. Um, after about 24 hours of observation there in the hospital, they decided that I had severe preeclampsia and they induced me. Um, after three days of trying to deliver naturally, um, I was taken in for an emergency C-section and William was um, delivered late Wednesday evening, December 5th. For the first 24 hours of his life, I was fairly sick and was unable to get to the NICU to see him as my own health was being addressed. And those were probably the hardest 24 hours of my life to know that he was so close and yet I could not see him or hold him. Thankfully, about 10 days into the hospital stay, we were both discharged and able to go home together. For about a year after delivering William, um, I struggled with a feeling that my heart was bracing, I was short of breath, the same symptoms I had during the pregnancy. Um, and this time I just kind of blamed it on the fact that I was a new mom and I was getting very little sleep. And, um, <clears throat> and then after about a year, I decided, well, maybe it was worth having someone check it out. So when I went to the doctor, he kind of confirmed I was just overly tired and probably an overly caffeinated new mom and um, didn't feel like there was much cause for concern. I didn't look sick and so he, he didn't feel like there was much to do. However, I insisted on getting a referral and I think that that referral truly saved my life. Um, I went and met with a cardiologist and he, he listened to me, he cared about me, he was invested in making sure that I felt better. For the first time in a long time, I felt like someone was on my side. The cardiologist then ordered um, a full run of different tests to figure out um, what was going on and what was causing these symptoms. Um, I, one of the tests he had ordered was an echocardiogram and I can remember laying on the bed while the um, the test was being done by the technician and seeing her facial expression and knowing that she had discovered or found something that was not right. Um, I even went home that evening and prepared my husband that something was found today. Um, about a week later, my husband and I met with the cardiologist and he gave me my diagnosis. Um, and I remember him telling me and me just kind of thinking, okay, he's just telling me I need to eat healthier and be less stressed. and. But then as he kept talking, I realized that was not the case. Um, he had discovered that I had a bicuspid aortic valve, um, which is a congenital heart defect. And essentially, I was born with a defect in my heart and had gone 31 years without knowing it. My husband and I then met with a cardiac surgeon, and he said that I was not, at this time, a candidate for the open heart surgery. He said that because there are constantly advancements in the medical profession and we didn't know what kind of options would be available to me in three to five years. He then also said that um, while it is a procedure that he does regularly because that's his profession, it is a higher risk um, operation and um, there is a risk of a stroke after the procedure and if anything were to happen to me, he would have comfort knowing that he gave me those three to five years with my family. Once I have the surgery, the follow-up care would include being under the watch of a cardiologist for the rest of my life, um, also being on a blood thinner to prevent the blood clotting around the mechanical valve, and also that when I was in quiet rooms such as this, that you'd be able to hear my heart ticking. He also recommended that I have my son, William, checked out 
as this is considered a genetic heart defect. Thankfully, he has a perfectly healthy, beautiful heart, and he's just growing fine and no complications from me. I may have passed on many things to him, but my heart was not one of them. It is because of the American Heart Association and the generous people like you that I know I will watch my son grow up. And it gives me hope as to what my options might be for when my heart does need to be fixed. So for that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart and my family thanks you.